Hi everybody, in this video, I'm gonna explain 15 ways that you can get your green card. So stick around. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Michael Ashuri, and I'm a US immigration lawyer practicing law out of Los Angeles, California. At my law firm, we work with clients from all across the world. We focus exclusively on immigration law and we regularly post videos on all types of immigration matters. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. And without further ado, let's talk about the reason why you're here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about 15 ways that you can get your green card. So let's get started. The first way that I wanna, and the first few types of green cards that I wanna talk about are family-based green cards. We're gonna start with the one that many of you already know about, and it's a green card through marriage. So basically, if you're in a legitimate marriage, a bona fide marriage, with either a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident, a green card holder, based on that marriage, you can apply for a green card. Now the marriage must have been, at the time you entered into the marriage, you should have intended to establish and build a life with your partner. Of course, the marriage can't, uh, should not have been entered into for purposes of obtaining immigration benefits. So that's the first option that I want to discuss. The second option that I want to discuss is a fiancé visa. The fiancé visa is a little bit different. And the way a fiancé visa works is that uh, you and your then fiancé will apply for a special visa, which will allow um, the foreign fiancé to come to the United States. And once the fiance is in the United States, they can apply, uh, the, the couple gets married and the fiance can apply for their green card through a process called an adjustment of status. So that's the fiance visa. Now, in addition to those two options, I wanna talk about other family-based green card options. So the first two options are about marriage type relationships, but there's other types of family relationships that can qualify for a green card. One is the um, parent of a U.S. citizen that's over 21 years old. There's also the child of a U.S. citizen, the child of a permanent resident, and the sibling, the brother or sister of a U.S. citizen. So if any of these relationships exist, uh, the person can potentially apply for a green card. So those are the family-based options. Now we're going to move away from the family-based green card options and we're gonna talk about employment-based green card options. So the one that I wanna start on and the one that I wanna focus on is the one that many of you know about and it's called an employer-sponsored green card. So what is an employer-sponsored green card? Basically, an employer-sponsored green card is when a US employer hires and is able to basically hire a foreign worker and through that job offer that they're, that they're offering the foreign worker, they can petition for a green card for the foreign worker. And there's a lot of steps involved, but basically the gist of it is that the U.S. employer must show that they tried to hire a U.S. worker and they were unable to hire a U.S. worker either because you know there, there weren't any willing and available U.S. workers for the position or something along those lines. And based on the fact that they were unable to hire a U.S. worker, they're able to hire the foreign worker and sponsor them for a green card. The job must be a full-time job offer and, um, and the, the U.S. employer must pay the foreign worker the similar, at, at least the same amount that a similarly situated U.S. worker would get paid. It's called something called the prevailing wage. Basically, there's policies in place to prevent foreign workers from coming to the United States and working for less than what U.S. workers get paid. So the U.S. employer has to pay the foreign worker at least the same amount that a qualified U.S. worker would get paid or more than that amount. So the two uh, visa categories that are, fall under the employer-sponsored green card are the EB2 and the EB3 preference categories. So there's two separate categories, EB2 and EB3. EB2 generally is for... Um, more sophisticated positions, advanced degree positions, and um, EB3 is for less advanced positions like unskilled labor, 
uh, or, or other certain types of positions. So, so the job duties and the job title will determine whether the person qualifies under EB2 or EB3. So that's one of the main employer-sponsored green card options. Now, I want to talk about something separate. So, so far we've covered family-based options and employer-sponsored options. Now I want to talk about two ways that you can get a green card through self-petition. Self-petition means that you can apply for yourself on your own without somebody else sponsoring you. And the two options that I want to talk about are EB1A and EB2 National Interest Waiver. So EB1A is a special green card for people that have an extraordinary ability. So if somebody's at the very top of their field in, in many different types of industries, if they're at the very top of their field in sciences, in business, in education, or, uh, or any number of fields, athletics, um, and they can demonstrate that they're at the very top of their field through awards, high compensation, publications, press releases, and so on and so forth, if they can demonstrate that there's somebody at the very top of their field, they may be eligible to apply for a green card on their own without a job offer, without a sponsor, without marriage. It's just on their own. That's EB1A. EB2 National Interest Waiver is the second uh, self-petition option that I want to mention to you. And basically the way an EB2 National Interest Waiver works is that it's specifically for people that are going to come to the United States and they're gonna work in, a, in, a, in an industry that's gonna benefit the United States as a whole. Essentially, it's in the national interest that the person come to the United States and get a, qualify for a green card without a job offer and uh, without the need for any sort of company to go through that whole process of showing that they tried to hire a US worker and were unable to do so. So um, basically how the national interest waiver works is that the person has to show that whatever they're gonna be doing in the United States is in the national interest, um, and that they are somebody that's gonna, that's in a position, based on their background, they're in a position to achieve success in whatever it is that they're going to be pursuing in the United States. Um, so yeah, that's the national interest waiver. The reason why it's called EB2 national interest waiver is because it's a special category within EB2. You know, if, if you recall, when we were talking about employer-sponsored green cards, we talked about EB3 and EB2. And both of those options typically require a job offer from a U.S. company. But EB2 National Interest Waiver is a special category of EB2, which doesn't require a job offer. Okay, I know we're talking about a lot of stuff. There's so far so much information, and we got a lot to go, so let's keep it moving. So... The next green card option that I want to discuss with you is EB-5. EB-5 is a special green card option for investors. And the way it works is that it allows somebody to invest in the United States and create jobs for U.S. workers. And based on making a large investment, right now the minimum investment amount is $900,000. Basically, based on making that investment and creating jobs for U.S. workers and benefiting the U.S. economy that person can qualify for a green card for themselves and their family members. Specifically for them, for themselves, their wife and their unmarried children under 21 years old. So that's the EB-5 investor visa. Okay, so where are we at? So far we've done family-based, um, we've done employment-based, we've done self-petition options, we've done investment-based green cards, and we, got, we still got a lot to go, so let's go. So now, these are two other um, green card options that many of you may not have heard about, so I wanna talk about them. So one is called EB1B. EB1B, it's for people, it's for outstanding professors and researchers. So people that are gonna be coming to the, to the United States to work as a professor or a researcher, and they can demonstrate that they're outstanding with, again, demonstrating various accolades, demonstrating publications, citations to their work, and various other criteria they can qualify for a green card, um, again, based on coming to the United States and working as either a professor or researcher. And again, that visa category is called EB-1B. Now, another category that I want to talk about is called EB-1C. 
EB1C is for multinational managers or executives. Now, EB1C has a, a, a lot of moving parts and I wanna explain it to you um, pretty step by step. So the way EB1C works is that it allows somebody that's working for a foreign company uh, to transfer to a related US company. So there must be a foreign company that this individual is working for as either a manager, and again, they must work as a manager or executive. So you have a foreign company and the person is working for the foreign company as a manager or executive, and they must have worked for the foreign company for at least one year, full time. And, and it, the EB, through EB1C, the person that's working at the foreign company can transfer to a related US company. And they, they must come to work for the US company as either a manager or executive. So to make it very simple, EB1C, it's called the, the, it's a green card option for multinational managers or executives. And basically it allows somebody that's working for a foreign company to transfer to a related US company. Um, that's EB1C. So let's, let's, let's move on. I know, I know it's, it might seem to you that we've done, you know, we have, we've done, so far we've done 10 separate ways to get your green card and we still have five more to go. So let's keep it moving. So the next green card option that I wanna to talk to you about is called the diversity visa. I know many of you have probably heard about this. It's called specifically, it's the diversity visa lottery. And the US government has a policy interest in making sure that we have, you know, that the United States is truly a melting pot of all kinds of cultures, all kinds of backgrounds, a very diverse, um, group of people that makes up the U.S. population. So they reserve a certain number of green cards for, um, for people that come from countries that don't necessarily have a large representation in the United States. So, you know, let's say there's a particular country and there's not many people from that country in the United States. The, uh, those individuals can apply for the diversity lottery. They enter into a special lottery, and if they get selected in the, in the lottery, they can basically apply for a green card to the United States, and that's the diversity visa. So that's, uh, that's one option. Another, another uh, green card option, this is totally separate, is for victims of abuse. And this particular green card option is called VAWA. It's spelled V-A-W-A, and it's the Violence Against Women Act, it's available to men and women. And basically it's for people that have suffered abuse from either a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident that they were married to. Actually, there's multiple categories of people that can qualify for VAWA. You can either be married to somebody who has abused you and that person should be a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident. Uh, a child of an abusive citizen or lawful permanent resident can also apply for VAWA. And the parent of a, an abusive U.S. citizen can also apply for VAWA. And essentially, to qualify for VAWA, you have to show that you had that relationship, whether it was marriage, whatever it was, and that you suffered abuse. And again, that's the Violence Against Women Act. It's a special law that allows uh, these victims of abuse to apply for their green card on their own without relying on their abusive, uh, that, that abusive person to do it for them. Okay, so uh, we, we're almost there. We got three more options to go and we're gonna get through them. So the next one is the T visa. The T visa is for victims of human trafficking. So it's a special option for people that are subject to human trafficking. Next, we have the U visa. The U visa is for people who suffered um, physical or mental abuse in the United States. Again, that's the U visa. And lastly, we have the EB4 visa. And the EB4 visa, there's a lot of different subcategories within EB4, uh, but one of the main ones is for certain religious workers. Um, and basically, based on having, for example, a job offer to work for a religious entity, there's, there's a lot of details about EB4, but as a general, one of the subcategories for EB4 is religious workers. So we did it. 
15 ways to get your green card. Um, you know, I told you we were going to do it. We went through all 15 ways. I uh, hope you guys found this information extremely helpful. Um, if you know anybody that could benefit from this information, please go ahead and share this video with them. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you guys knowledge because with knowledge you have power and knowledge is, is, is to empower you. So uh, share this with as many people as you can that think that you think can benefit from this information. As If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We're regularly posting immigration videos to share our knowledge with you and to, um, to help you guys. So go ahead and subscribe. Like this video if you haven't already liked it. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. Feel free to leave your questions or your comments in the comments section below. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.